Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here with you all. I want to thank the uh, brother Fitzsimmons and his wife Fitzsimmons for allowing me to be here. And I have a few words to, to say this morning. And I'm going to be using the text from Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. But I'm going to read it for you if you don't have the Bibles. If you want to take that off the stand and hold it. No, that's fine. Just, I'm going to, I will might take off the glasses. <laughs> Okay, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says this, and maybe you've all heard it before. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The law of gravity, courtesy of Sir Isaac Newton, is a law concerning weight and heaviness. Gravity on a planet determines how heavy something is. For example, when we say that an issue has gravity, we mean that it's a serious issue, that it weighs heavily in our mind of great concern, a serious concern, a concern that we should just drop everything and pay attention to. To honor a person is to consider everything about that person with gravity, with weight, with seriousness. Why do I mention gravity? Because the Hebrew word for honor is kavod. It literally means a weight, heavy. Kavod is a word that has its roots in the language of the Egyptians who carry on massive building projects. Kavod is a weight used in building projects to help create a balance when moving or lifting large objects. Kavod is transferring the weight of one object to another to provide support and to make the load easier to carry. Kavod is like balancing a load, creating an equal weight. That is where we get the idea of this word honor, as you consider someone an equal to yourself. In other words, our parents should be a significant priority in our lives. They should not be ignored or taken lightly. Now, the Greek word for honor in this same verse is timao, where we get the word time. It means to determine the value of something. In this case, to determine that the value is high. We value our time. We should give our parents a high value of our time, even higher than ministry, and treat them accordingly. Basically, we are to take every passage in the Bible that describes how we should treat others and apply it twice to our parents. Love them with agape love, treat them with the fruit of the Spirit, speak to them and to them with respect, forgive them wholeheartedly, and seek reconciliation with them and when issues are misunderstood at times. The same applies to parents who act less honorably. The Bible gives counsel for dealing with ungodly parents as well. We may not have a close relationship with them and we may put a lower value on their advice, but we are still to love them according to Jesus. There is nothing in the Bible that indicates we are excused from helping our parents with their basic needs when they are older. Knowing how to honor parents is difficult, and relationships with our mothers and fathers are complicated. How do we not honor our parents? Well, this reminds me of a story. And there's a young man, and he tells his mother, Mom, I want to get married. I met a girl, and I'm going to marry her. And because you think you know my likes and dislikes, I have a little challenge for you, Mom. I'm going to bring in three women to the house, and I'm going to have them sit down and speak with you. And then you will decide which of the three I'm going to marry. And so the mother chats with these three women, and eventually the son comes out and says, OK, Mom, guess which one I'm going to marry. And the mother replies, the one on the right. And the son says, how did you know? And the mother replies, because I don't like you. <laughs> so 
We don't honor our parents when we marry an individual who does not bring honor to the family. Leviticus 19.3 says this, Each of you must respect your mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. In other words, to respect one's parents implies taking care of their physical needs when they themselves are not able to do so. It is interesting that the Exodus verse that we just read earlier says to honor your father and mother, but in this verse, the mother is mentioned first. Why? Because by nature, a child has a closer relationship with the mother who raises him or her up. So it's assumed that she would be honored more. Therefore, to balance the honor between mother and father, it is more important to mention the father in the Exodus verse. A Jewish rabbi explains that honoring one's parents is with food, with drink, and clothing. But it's not enough. One can take care of all your parents' physical needs without actually honoring them. The relationship between parents and their children is like a mirror of our relationship with God. Just as God created man, our parents create us. For some, to honor our parents can mean that we never question their actions, we accept them, we trust them, and believe 100% in their love and support. Some of us respect our parents for giving us life, for sacrificing material things for themselves in order to provide for us. Still, others find it difficult to respect their parents. What is respect? Respect means that the son is not to stand in his father's place, nor sit in his place, nor contradict him, nor to tip the scales, the balance against him. In other words, don't unbalance the honor structure of the home. What is honor? Honor means that the son must supply his father with food and drink, provide him with clothes and footwear, and assist in his coming and going in and out of the house. There is a fundamental tension between parents and children. That tension comes down to difference. Our children are not us. Our choices, our goals, our strengths, our errors may not be theirs. Biology calls having children reproduction, but we are not reproducing ourselves at all. We're producing a different person, a different being. Our children won't mirror us, no matter how much we hope they would. We have all met baseball obsessed parents who can't believe their kids don't enjoy watching a baseball game. <laughs> or a musical obsessed parent who can't believe their kids can't carry a tune in a song. A father once said, with certain helplessness in his voice, I don't know how to spend time with my ninth grader anymore. We just don't enjoy the same things. Children are wired different from their parents, but parents are hardwired to try to make their children as much like them as possible. We should consider that our children's differences are precisely their gifts to us. Honoring us doesn't mean emulating us or becoming us, because the truth is that this commandment is not really for the children. It's for the adults. The fifth commandment is for those of us who no longer depend on their parents for day-to-day -day physical, financial, or emotional needs. We are now the grown-up children who are in a position to kind of overlook our parents simply by not needing them the way we used to, by forgetting to check in on them, or by ignoring their opinions. Sometimes we're impatient when they can't hear us as well as they used to, or when they tell us a story that we've heard many times before. Perhaps we have stopped hugging them or have stopped asking them what they did last week, or we haven't suggested to have lunch with them. It is because our parents are no longer first priority to us and because we have done our parents basically out of a job. That's why God now says we need to remember to honor them most. It's easier to obey and honor your parents when they are still paying your bills and fighting your battles. But this commandment is for when our parents no longer do that for us. God is asking us to affirm life beyond the physical needs and to honor life itself. 
That is a true test of our humanity. We who are parents can long for the relationship we had with our children when they were small, when they jumped to greet us at the door, and when we could heal their wounds with every kiss. We as adult children long for the all-knowing parents we had from our youth. And some of us long for the parents we never had because our parents, our parents were not loving us the way we needed to be loved or the way they were not interested in our lives the way we hoped or they didn't approve of the people we chose to build our lives with. An aging individual once said, do you know what it's like to labor to cross a street? To walk while always worrying if I will trip? Do you know what it's like for my child to witness me being helped to the bathroom? I didn't mind the help as much as I minded my child witnessing that I needed it. We cannot honor unless we begin to sympathize. To honor is to make peace with who our parents really are today, not who we remember them to be, and not who we hope that they could still be. How do we honor our parents? Let me tell you a story. You probably heard this story before because it was before my time. And it has different variations, but I like this version best. A minister was on a train on his way home. He found himself seated next to a young man, and to pass his time, he tried to start up a conversation with the young man, but the young man would not answer him. He turned to the young man and said, Son, I am a preacher. I am a minister. I'm glad to help you any way I can. And the young man, through his tears, proceeded to tell his story. Preacher, years ago, I was mean with my mom and dad that one day I even went as far as to strike my father and mother with my fists that they told me to leave the house. Preacher, I have traveled this country for several years and I miss my parents and I would like to return. I wrote to mom and dad a letter and told them that I'd be on this old train coming home. The preacher said, son, do you know if your mom and dad will allow you to come home? The young man said, preacher, We've lived beside these railroad tracks all my life, and behind the house is a great big old apple tree. And I told my dad in my letter, go out in the backyard and hang a white pillowcase on the tree. And if I see it from the train, then I know that's the signal that they have welcomed me home. So preacher, I would like you to look through the window of the train as we approach the home. And tell me if you see that white pillowcase on the apple tree. The old preacher, not knowing what to expect, wiped the window off that old train and looked out the window. And the young man asked, do you see the white pillowcase on the apple tree? And the old preacher said, no son, there is no white pillowcase on the apple tree because your mom and dad are standing under that tree waiting a big white bed sheet saying, come home. I welcome you. We love you. What the parents and the preacher did not know but that this young man a few weeks ago had given his life to Jesus Christ. What an honor for the parent when they receive a rebellious child that has given his life to Jesus. Balance has returned, kavod, to the relationship. If you have not honored your father or mother who sit here, do it today. God commands it. There is still time to balance the relationship with the love of Jesus. It has been an honor for me to be among you. God bless you. God bless you.